Hi, I'm Sharon and I'm a Christian. This is just a short response that I had to an article by Corey Ten Boom. Well, an article about a letter by Corey Ten Boom. In case you don't know who she was, she was one of um, the Christians who was brutalized during the Holocaust for helping Jewish people. She had a belief that the rapture, which is when Jesus comes for his church, is not going to happen before what's called the tribulation, which is a time of God's punishment on the world. The thing I was responding to was what she was saying is the tribulation has already started and that Christians are going through it now. While it's true that Christians are going through persecution, tribulation, which means trouble, right now, it's not the same as what's described in Revelation. In Revelation, that is God's punishment specifically to the world for its evil. It's been talked about and alluded to many times in the Bible and in Revelation that's when it's actually happening. And the thing that I was saying, the biggest point I think in my mind is that it's uncharacteristic of God to put Christians through that kind of um, punishment because it's not it's not a testing, it's not a pruning, it's punishment specifically for people who have ch for generations have chosen to do evil things against God. When God judged the world in Noah's flood, he took Noah and his family out of the way. He warned them and gave them a chance to escape before he punished the whole entire world. And when Sodom and Gomorrah were destroyed, he got Lot out before he did it. In fact, if you go read that account, he says, the angel that warns Lot says that he can't do anything until Lot was gone out of the way. And one of the interesting places I read recently as I was reading Isaiah, in chapter 26 and some of the preceding chapters, God is talking about the tribulation in context with other things. And he comes in verse 20 and 21, he comes to say, come my people, enter your chambers and shut your doors behind you. Hide yourself, as it were, for a little moment until the indignation is past. For behold, the Lord comes out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth. The earth will no longer disclose her blood and will no longer cover his slain. Now, in those places, he kind of intermingled it. He was talking about Tyre, he talked about Babylon, then he talked about the world as well. And there was different things going on. And if you think about it, there's never been a time where the whole entire world has been a bloodbath you know and but the point of that verse he says to those people who are his come out of that and since there's never been a time that's been a bloodbath until the only time that the bible hints at that happening <coughs> plainly records it actually is revelation where people are and things are dying in thirds and quarters and on and on and that place in isaiah he says to his people come out before he does that you see god doesn't he's not looking to punish his people. Yes, we go through tribulation. Yes, we go through persecution for being Christians. I have a poster up there, 10 ways we can pray for our persecuted brothers and sisters, because it's real. Persecution is real. In fact, it's promised to us. If we're going to walk godly in Christ, 2 Timothy 3 verse 12 says that we are going to be persecuted. It's a fact of, of the Christian life. The thing is, it was people going through persecution who spoke of the rapture first. Paul, he was eventually martyred for his faith in Christ. He was the one who wrote down about the rapture both in 1 Corinthians 15 and in 1 Thessalonians 4. Jesus himself, who died one of the most brutal types of deaths for us and rose again, he was the one who in Luke 21 verse 36 said, after talking about the tribulation, pray that you would be counted worthy to escape these things that are coming. So it's not something that we as Christians should be looking toward. In Revelation, you can see everything is about his anger toward this earth and toward this world. All of it is judgment. Where Christ, he took our judgment. What we deserved because we sinned, he took that on himself. Again, in 1 Thessalonians, in 1 verse 10, Paul thanks God who delivers us from the wrath to come. And in 5.9, he talks again about how Christ has delivered us from, the, from wrath. Because he says we're not appointed to wrath. It's not our lot anymore as Christians. I'm going to end this now. 
because I could go on and on saying the same thing. But the point is, there is a rapture that happens before what we call the tribulation begins, because God does love us and he doesn't punish us for no reason. And Jesus wants us to be with him. And it's uncharacteristic of God's nature to think that he would punish the bride of Christ along with sinners for the sinner's sin. It doesn't work that way. Anyway, I hope this has been helpful and I will see you next time. Bye.